chance to a update on YouTube, but boy, look what we missed. Last week, we were talking about uh, and being positioned and had some spy puts on, and, and again, we were trying to do Google's put spreads and uh, bear put spreads. Uh, we were covering some of those today. What I wanted to point out is what does the analysis look like and where do we go from here? Interesting couple of things is uh, the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And again, this is the newsletter for this week, and we're going to make this real short and quick because you're going to want to look at what we put into this week's newsletter. Uh, the only way to get this is a be a subscriber of our advisory service coming to live. It includes the live trade room, the algo room. And uh, at this point, one of the positions in the algo room is still on the short side, and that's the algo room right there. Uh, it's still short on the QQQ position. Um, didn't do much because of the volatility today. A lot of these wide range bars, we don't get a, a big movement sometimes in the ES. But anyway, what I wanted to just briefly talk about real cover real quick is we were looking for the market to move lower. We saw that the Commodity Futures Trading Commission uh, showed that the small speculators as of Tuesday the 30th, that report came out Friday afternoon, were still long the S&Ps. I believe now they've been wiped out. And that's what we're talking about. I think, uh, you know, also consider selling near daily resistance. So throw that analysis out the window because we were looking for maybe the market to rally up first this week. And then, you know, in the pr progression of markets that sell off, they go up and down and down and up and down. This one just opened lower and that was it. What are my thoughts? Well, before we came into this week, Friday, we closed the weekend out and these were areas that I, for those that were interested uh, to look at a couple things. Retail, um, which is uh, again, VF Corp, which is North Face. But here's a couple numbers that I'm, I think you can pause the video and you can take a look at this. Some of these names and numbers still look phenomenal on today's action. Google, for example, 156, 58 target zone. Now again, I wrote this up this weekend, not knowing today. So. To take advantage of some of these uh, levels, you would need to look at the extended hours. We got that this morning on the extended hours, like uh, Microsoft and some of these names. And, and in fact, I'm gonna tell you this right now, while Baba looks pretty good, Target, which we were long, we got stopped out and that's all right. We had a small loss. One of the, uh, uh, I guess, viewers did make a comment. Hey, John, my work shows something different and that's great. Um, more importantly, what I think is this one right here, by the way, on a side note, British tobacco got filled today. That's a 9% dividend yield. Uh, I'm a fan of British tobacco at 9% dividend yield. Um, meanwhile, AMD opened a lot lower than my progress, uh, projected support target. Remember, I did this based on last week over the weekend, not knowing that Japan would be down 12%. This one, AMD, NVIDIA, uh, came in a lot more in the pre-market and Marvell. I'm only looking at those three semiconductors uh, for positions. Uh, MongoDB, Snowflake came right into the support zone. NASDAQ, uh, JP Morgan didn't even get down to my support levels, and Truist Financial. Coinbase came to 160 and shot up like a rocket, um, and that was probably one of the most egregious lower opens this morning. Let's take a look at that and go to C. O I N. So how do we trade this? There it is. I mean, it didn't even give you a chance unless you bought it right on the open. So sometimes open orders work good because then you don't, unless you cancel them. But a couple things in that list I want to go through is Baba. Alibaba, to me, um, the volume longer term institutions are still in it. The uh, monthly buy signal is still intact. And if you take a look at the progression of not the highs, Focus on just the lows. Since January of this year, it pulls back and this low greater than that low. It rallies, it pulls back, this low greater than that low. It rallies, now this low is greater than that low. So what did you notice? Higher lows. Now, uh, maybe perhaps we come in here, keep a, a focus. This seat looks to be scraping a floor of a, I mean, a, the bottom of the floor here. For valuations but nobody's going to talk about alibaba i'm pretty sure over the next couple days unless something happens in china but moral of the story is people will be talking about i guess berkshire hathaway and 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 uh, warren buffett cutting half his position in apple after the bell tonight palantir beat on earnings so let's take a look at other names nvidia is not going out of business by any stretch of the imagination 
Um, this morning we picked up some uh, on the open and I was looking at a uh, kind of like a better support zone in here. I don't know if we're going to get back down in there. I'm not interested in buying a rally. I would say get a chance. We need a couple more days of, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. We need a couple more days of back and fill, I, you know, something like this. Uh, bottom picking is kind of hard, even for my work. But I would say that um, we we definitely want to be against an old high uh, that low held in pretty well in NVIDIA. So pullbacks might be in, in the 94 to the 96 zone tomorrow. So we'll take this one day at a time. I don't want to say, hey, place an order for the rest of your life uh, on an open order. That's not going to probably work well. Um, but somehow, if we test this, maybe that was a fictitious low where, you know, a fictitious meaning you're not going to see that one again. That was a gift, I think. Uh, but what I would say is, at, at least with NVIDIA, is maybe um, you're at 94 and a half in the midpoint of that candle right there would be a good spot to look at if you're not in NVIDIA. But as far as anything else, earnings this week are going to be kind of interesting already. You had Tyson that beat, you got Palantir that beat. And so I don't think that a lot of these companies are, are really going to do well uh, or do that bad, excuse me. Um, Caterpillar. Uh, this is one that I would not want to touch in the industrials. I know uh, some people might say, hey, look, it's kind of cheap. The other one that was cheap, it got a lot cheaper, and it never recovered off its low, is John Deere. So I want to kind of stay away from those names. Those might be a little bit um, worse to uh, in, 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 if we have to prolong another the, the Fed cut uh, till September. Uh, the other one that I wanted to bring to your attention was Netflix. Now, this is one that seasonally goes down after earnings, and I'm not sure I put that in the video or not in the last uh, one we did. But, I mean, it actually didn't do that bad relative to some of the other majors. Um, Disney has earnings out this week. Now, Disney is, I mean, broke a trend line. The volume looks bad. It looks sickly. They got issues with, I don't know, woke policies or whatever people want to think about that. Um, but I'm I'm thinking of, I'm a, more of a buyer down here at these lows again. So I don't know if we'll get there, but you may want to bottom pick somewhere down at Disney. Another theory or theme that you could look at is when the market goes down, sell out of the money puts or do a protected uh, put spread, a bull put spread. A bull put spread sells the closer to the money, you collect more premium, you buy an out of the money put further out. To help protect in case they you know cook the books go out of business file bankruptcy or the world implodes you're protected i don't want to be unprotected i never know in this market i've seen enough stuff in my 40 some odd years of career that'll curdle your eyelids backwards so moral of the story is i think like for example coinbase today right uh opening at where it did one i mean that was a that was just in case you didn't see it let's look at it again i mean uh just Eight days ago, this stock was trading at 269, and today it, it traded in, uh, even in the pre market, it was lower than 161. So, again, those are pretty disastrous moves for a lot of people. The fact that the small specs got liquidated out, I think uh, this was a flush out in the market. The fact is, another thing is that Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett, is sitting on $2.277 billion, whatever it is, of cash, right? Um, you think about that for a second. Why is he waiting? He didn't want to buy stocks up here. He wants to buy stocks down there. But maybe he won't get them down here, but he's going to be patient and he's going to slowly make stuff work that he's probably missed. So um, that I, I just wanted to point out that there's people with cash waiting for the crash to get back into the market. A popular stock that's done, I guess, okay, which again, two weeks ago or less than three weeks ago, it was at 74 bucks. This stock is trading at 54 and even had worse action overnight. Against these old eyes at 49 to 50, Uber's another one that I think has some pretty decent valuation that you can trade against that if you see it in the extended hour or the pre-market session. We're getting some really dynamic trades and in, in the pre-market or in extended hours and after hours. So this week, we're going to see uh, uh, the likes of Supermicro uh, with its earnings. And I would have to say somewhere near 450, the, the pivot support, um, you know, somewhere between 450 and 480. I know that's $30, but it's a $500 stock. Somewhere down there, I'd be taking a look at that as well, because you're going to get these moves that will be like blink of an eye, 
um, you know, almost $30, $40 in some of those big name stuff. So there shows today's action where we opened lower, we traded higher. There was people willing to buy near these lows. That's, that's the obvious. The question is, do they go back and test those lows? And that's what we have to take one day at a time. But hopefully you take a look at a few things here in, in the marketplace and, and some of those names that I gave out in those levels. So pause the video and take a picture of this. Retail, Lululemon, between 223, 220. Dollar General, give that a shot. Uh, on Cloud, sneaker people. Um, that one I think has got some incredible promise. In fact, that would have been, uh, that was one of the trades. And you can also look at an option on that. It's optionable. I would go all the way out to maybe October for On Cloud. Earnings are, I believe, August 28th or the 23rd. I forgot off the top of my head. But either way, On Cloud, this is, this is a, another one down in here that today, I, I, you know, opens at 35 and shoots right to 37. And on cloud, we had 30, 30 um, pegged it. Here was our, our numbers coming into this week, 34 to 36, look for a buying opportunity. So take a photo of this gang, uh, and then we'll review that as the week goes on. Now that I'm here, um, we will update you. Also keep in mind advanced decline. In the in the Russell, I made recommendations to go with the September long call spreads. Buy back the short side of the call spreads. This market went from significantly overbought on, on May 31st. This is, a again, a weekly chart, a weekly chart. Um, it pulled back a little bit and then shot up. It's in, in less than two weeks already at extreme, extreme, listen carefully, extreme, extreme oversold levels. When we get down near these lines in the sand, you can typically rally. The advanced decline was not phenomenal, but the volume's okay. So anyone that says, oh, growth isn't gonna happen, that's all right. A lot of this uh, price action is commensurate to the weighting of regional banks. So you wanna watch for that. On the S&P 500, real quick, I, you know, we one of the reasons we were in spy puts and recommended those and talked about it in these YouTube videos is that the 10-day ATR was rising. That's not a good formula. The volume action of the person volume momentum indicator was falling like a rock. Um, the advanced decline was getting a little bit better. And now what I would suggest is that if we get another day or two sometime this week, this is a daily time frame here. This is a daily chart and spy. Where if we need to get down a little bit more in order to instill that fear and get oversold in in so I think maybe we chop around, maybe you go rally, rallies might be sold. But I, I think buying somewhere near the 506 and 500, if we get that opportunity over the next couple of days, it's not really the price as much as the price condition I'm waiting for. If we can get that MIC oscillator down into this over extreme oversold level, um, I would then say pull the trigger and then we want confirmation that the 10 day ATR starts to lay off its highs. It starts to weaken a bit. When you get that 10 day ATR weakening, that's your sign. It's a little safer to step into the, the, the your big toe in the water and be ag more aggressively long. That's all I got for tonight. I hope that helps. Uh, crazy market action. And boy, we had, it was a smorgasbord out there today. So I hope you enjoy some of the stocks in the consumer discretion. It's Target, it's Best Buy, it's Starbucks, it's Disney at lower levels, it's Royal Caribbean at 128. Financials, it's JP Morgan, it's Truist, Coinbase, forget about. Uh, software, it's MongoDB, it's Snowflake, it's Fortinet. Semis, only three, AMD, NVIDIA, Marvell, and those are the numbers. And that's what we gave for our clients. And, and uh, that's what we're trading even for uh, our, our own account. So therefore, um, you now have some insight of, about what we're looking at the overall market. And I will see you later this week. Thanks for listening. I hope that information finds you well.